We're going to take you inside City Hall today and talk about the budget process that is unfolding before your eyes, the shock and awe budget as I call it, or the uh, misleading budget as it actually is. But listen, we had to play along. We had to give this system a chance, this new process a chance. So I've made presentations at all but one of the committees and I didn't go to the last one because it conflicted with another committee. Um, I shared ideas on how we may be able to cut expenses internally, uh, some of the fluff, if you will, some of the gravy, uh, get rid of some of those dollars before we start talking about cuts to services and scaring people. I offered, you know, uh, revenue ideas. We have 30 to 35 million dollars in the system right now in incremental property taxes and they're caught up in red tape. Red tape. Uh, and it was quite funny because some members of the EPC, well, I mean, how did you come up with those numbers? It's on the, it's on the website. <laughs> it is. Uh, and they all wanted to see that. Absolutely. I'm going to put them online because you're going to see them at the same time they see them because that's how it works here. Um, and you'll see just how well it does, uh, the math does figure itself out. I gave them one project and one revenue generation idea that could start tomorrow and it would generate $14 million in property tax revenues. And it doesn't impact 90% of us or more. Um, they just wanted to know what it was and I told them. Nothing more from that. Um, very interesting, very interesting. We could have done deeper work if we had access to information. They keep saying we have more access than ever before. The mayor keeps saying, Councillor Klein, all you have to do is ask the questions. Well, I did that. And I got really nothing back but well-engineered statements about how some information is confidential or we don't have time to give that information or you have access to the GLs now. We do, but you'd have to sign a, an NDA so I couldn't tell you about it. And the GL system here, really? 1922, I, I really, I think this was the very first GL system ever created. I mean, I asked for something as basic as travel. How much does the city of Winnipeg spend on travel? A CAO said to me, who's an accountant, um, well, I can't give you that information. I can't give it all to you because some of it's confidential. Using my money to travel, why is that confidential? I don't need the names. I already know the mayor travels a lot and he takes some staff with him. I already know uh, some councillors travel a lot and it goes through different budgets because they're the chair of this or the chair of that. I just wanted to know how much we are paying for travel. And then the answer was, well, we don't have that information at our fingertips. That's going to take a while because we're very busy. <laughs> you're a CA, you're in charge of the finances, and you're telling me it would take a long time to figure out how much we spend on travel? Wow. If I had done that, I would have been fired that second. You know, I didn't see the mayor or the finance chair at the police budget. They didn't come as a delegation to tell us what to do or to give us suggestions. No. I didn't see them at anyone. I didn't see any EPC member. Why? Maybe because they know who's really making the call, who's really going to make the decisions. And they know this is just a game to take care of the non-EPC people. <laughs> we heard from many, many people and business people that uh, are frustrated with the city. They're disappointed in this process. They're angry. And it, it bothered me at first, and then I thought, oh, this uh, seems very familiar. It wasn't that long ago that the mayor went publicly more than once that, uh, stating that the transit union was going to walk out. People better get ready now. You know, take steps to be ready because he was pretty sure in September, as soon as kids went back to school, uh, there was going to be no bus service. He was the only one who thought that. It's those games that I, I just don't, uh, I don't appreciate because what do those, what do those statements really do? Do they, do they accomplish anything positive? They don't. Um, all they do is induce fear. They pit people against people, department against par department, uh, counselor against counselor, and just drives the city down, down, down instead of bringing it up. How, how, how can anyone trust this administration anymore? How could you trust the budget anymore. You know, one business person spoke and said that uh, the city is killing off businesses. He gave examples, uh, raised parking rates by double. Now we make a $10 million profit in parking. Is that where we want to make money or do we want to make it in things that improve the city? 
Um, we arbitrarily eliminated parking spots around his business. Nobody asked. Nobody asked how this might impact. Nobody asked if they're, how they felt about it or for their, for their ideas. They just went ahead and they, they did that. And that business suffered a 30% loss within the first year. That's incredible. We should be helping businesses thrive. We should be making it easy for people to, let's come downtown. If we want to build up a, a downtown and be proud of it, we need to help people come downtown. We need to do things to make it vibrant. So, you know, the city can't pay for a lot of that stuff, but, but the city can create the atmosphere, can lay the foundation for all of that activity to happen. We could create an express line for development, downtown development. And, and we could, uh, as long as it was with uh, affordable living spaces, we could do even more, right? We could, we could help them even more to do that. And that would start picking up downtown. That would start addressing some of our core issues. But, but we're, we're, we're not doing that. You know, that, that was nowhere in our budget. There was no vision in our budget. I mean, we need a strategic plan for the city. We need a vision. Where do we want to be and how are we going to get there? We need to truly understand our strengths and work on those. We need to know our weaknesses and get better at that. But we also need to know the risks. And the risk that I've seen over the last six years, wow. Court cases, one-off projects, let's do that, let's do this, let's do that. Nobody knows what's going on. I don't know how they keep it together. Um, we need to have the vision share the vision, and then lead the charge. Get out of the way. Create the foundation so our city, our residents, can make things happen so that we can be proud of what's going on in our own city. Seeing it grow, seeing businesses open their doors, seeing more people walking downtown, which also, more eyeballs, means less crime. That's a proven fact. I'll promise you this. I'll keep exploring and digging in and get as much information as I can. And I'll keep dreaming because uh, that's what many people tell me. <laughs> You're just dreaming for that some of this stuff will happen. No, I'm not. It should happen. And as long as I'm alive, I'm going to fight to make sure that we get back on track. Um, and I'm going to keep asking questions despite all the spin and the uh, polished resp political responses. I'm going to keep asking the questions because I'm not going to settle. For, well, this is how we do it at the city. I'm not going to stop believing that we can be better. I'm not going to stop believing that there are better ways to run this city because there are. This is a great city with great people. We have so much potential. But right now the city is hurting and it's crying for help. This is a perfect time for our leadership to be a leader. At EPC, I sat at the end of the table and I said to our mayor, Take a step in leadership with this budget. Freeze all senior executive salaries. Some are like $250,000. Freeze the salaries while we're in this financial crunch. Don't fill the uh, vacant uh, executive positions because we have uh, two that are vacant. One's a, a lower level executive position, but we're doing just fine without them. And that could save us almost <laughs> you know, uh, half a million dollars, maybe more when you uh, eliminate the uh, extra support staff. Uh, I said, uh, this is a really good time to be a leader for all of you at the table at EPC and for the mayor to uh, eliminate the extra pay that he gives to EPC plus two. They get extra money. They get paid more than anybody else on council, which it's the point. Uh, the deputy mayor, the assistant deputy mayor, all handpicked by the mayor, get extra money. They get bigger expense accounts because they're chairs. Now, as police board chair, I don't get any extra money. I do, we do get an expense account of that, it's $4,500. Take it away, get rid of it. Get rid of everybody's because it's a very insignificant amount of money. But it's about setting the stage and it's about leading by example. Again, it's not a lot of money, but it means a lot. What about those people that are you know, not going to be able to uh, ride the bus at night because we're looking at cuts? Or churches that have to pay for garbage pickup that they used to get, or for basic city services? What about for my community? People in Westwood losing their library. Why Westwood? Gee, I wonder. 
Look, it doesn't all fall on the mayor. Every member of VPC has the ability to say no. No to the extra pay and no to the extra money. If you want to keep your power, go ahead. But you shouldn't take the money and you shouldn't take the expenses. Not in times like this. I didn't come here, though, to uh, take sides. I, didn't, I honestly didn't come here to be the opposition. Oh, no. I didn't come here to get into that schoolyard fight. I came here to make bold decisions. To, uh, I came here to make those decisions that would shape the future of our city for generations to come. I didn't come here to knock the city down with everything we do, knock it down. I came here to build the city up. We are a great city and we will be again.